Good morning, darling. Good morning, sweetie. I hope you noticed Julius's face when he ushered our guests in this morning. I did. Well, I guess uh, Julius is a movie fan. And that's not all. He's a baseball fan. <laughs> yes, and it's certainly written all over him today. Well, it's 8.15, and this is Breakfast with Dorothy and Dick, coming as usual, direct from our apartment on 66th Street in New York. And today we're very happy to have at our breakfast table two friends who are also neighbors. And they've strolled up the street for some coffee and eggs with us. They're Leo DeRocha, who needs no introduction in this neck of the woods, and his very beautiful wife, Mrs. DeRocha, otherwise known as Lorraine Day. Now, here we are. Yes, here we are, and I think probably the first thing that I've, I've got to do, not only for the members of our household, I know Mary is lurking in the doorway trying to get a peek at Mrs. DeRocha, and I know that uh, all the members of our audience will want to know what she's wearing, and it being a very chilly morning in New York, she has on a tan skirt, a beige skirt, and a violet-colored sweater set, high-necked uh, sweater, and also a cardigan on top of it. And she looks very pretty. She hasn't any jewelry except her wedding ring, and I'm going to ask her about that. Uh, Lorraine, uh, your wedding ring is gold and has diamonds in it, and uh, it's a twin, isn't it? Yes, uh, we had them made in Los Angeles, and they have... Oh, uh, flowers of diamonds and rubies around them. Looks great on me. I don't know how it looks on Leo. Well, I've been kidded quite a bit about it, dear, but uh, I must say that I like it very much. <laughs> I think it might be a little bit difficult batting with that, uh, well, Leo. Well, Dick, uh, as you know, I, I don't think I'll have any difficulty this year worrying about whether I can wear it or not when I bat. <laughs> uh, do you uh, ever take it off? You must have to take it off when you wash your hands, don't you? Very seldom, Dorothy. Uh, I do take it off once in a while, but uh, I, I very seldom do. You know, some people are, are sort of superstitious about their wedding rings. I never was. I took mine off uh, right away so that uh, in case I ever had to take it off again, I wouldn't feel well, something terrible off. was going to happen to our marriage. But, you know, some people wear them and just say, I've never had my wedding ring off my finger, and then sometimes something happens to them and they have to get them sawed off, you know. I know lots of girls in pictures are that way. They put tape and the makeup men have a terrible time trying to hide them, which I think is very silly. Yes, I think so, too, because I think that uh, uh, any marriage that is really uh, worthwhile would last whether you took your wedding ring off or not. I wouldn't want to lose mine, though, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel rather badly about that. Lorraine, I understand that you have become sort of a, a baseball fan since you married Leo. Yes, I didn't know anything about it until I met Leo. And what Fact, makes you think you know anything about it now? Oh, I'm very smart now. Oh. I am. I know all the players, and I know where they play, and I know the bat boy, and I know the umpire. How, How do you come know you know the bat boy? He doesn't have a number. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask that same question. <laughs> also, he's usually smaller, isn't he? Well, this particular bat boy isn't smaller. I knew them in, in Cuba because then they were a different color. <laughs> Oh, here he's white. Yes. Well, in Brooklyn, all the bat boys come big here. In Brooklyn, they do things different. Oh, they do. They do things how, different. Leo, how do you get to be a bat boy? Oh, they, uh, uh, Dan Comerford, who he just originated with baseball, I believe, in Brooklyn. He's been there about 40 years, and uh, he's the clubhouse man, the custodian of all uh, the paraphernalia, the uniforms and bats and balls and gloves and all that stuff. And uh, the boys come to him and ask if they can be bat boys. He has a certain group when they get to be maybe uh, 12, 13 years old, and if they're large enough, he goes for quite big kids. And, and he'll pick one out, and we'll keep him, oh, maybe four or five years. Then the first thing you know, we lose him, and we'll have another one. Do but they, Dan selects them. Do they ever become baseball players? Themselves? Some of them do. We, uh, we haven't had any on our, uh, on our, since I've been here. Now, is that a salaried position or honorary? Oh, yeah, they, they, they pay them. Oh, I should think that salary. so many little boys would do it just out They'd of love, the love to do. of I the got, game. I got hundreds of letters from kids who just wanted to do it, but Dan selects them, and they, they do get money for it. I suppose, Leo, it's superfluous to ask you if you miss being with the Dodgers this season. Well, Dorothy, I, uh, it's a funny thing. I, uh, I have never been so happy in my life as I have been uh, the past month or so, but uh, I really do miss baseball. You, you get the urge and the itch and you grab the papers and run to the radio and wondering how your boys are doing. And, and uh, although I'm not, uh, I'm not with the club, I've only seen them play two ball games, and that was in this past series with the Cardinals, and uh, I didn't see any games at all on the coast. Uh, every time that they do play, I'm not with them physically, but spiritually I'm with them. I'm pulling for them to win. 
You know, it's a shame, Leo, that you weren't here in New York for Babe Ruth Day. I understand that it was really a thrilling tribute. I certainly would have loved to have been here. He's a great guy, and, and uh, a better fellow couldn't have been given a day. It was very touching. We saw it in the newsreels the other night, and, of course, the Babe looked pretty gray and tired, but he made his little speech, and uh, I bet there wasn't a dry eye in the stadium. He's a great guy. He really is, and, uh, and it's a great, great tribute to him, and uh, he deserves every bit of it. He's been one of our great players of all time. Babe has been a wonderful influence, don't you think, Leo, for shut-ins and hospitals and those people who could never attend the game but uh, followed his career. So oh, closely. wonderful, Dick, wonderful. He's been, he, he did that all his life, even when I was with the New York Yankees and played on the same club with Babe. Why, it was never too much trouble for him to go any place, and especially for kids. What do you great. think about that plan for him to sponsor a youth baseball movement? Uh, don't you think that's I, a Oh, wonderful, Dick, and I see that that's an operation now that they've already started it. That's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I've been told, Leo, that you've done a lot of that uh, uh, with children. Have well, you? Dorothy, I, I have in all the years I've been in baseball, which has been about 23. Uh, I've gone to father and son banquets and gave speeches and talks here and there. And especially last summer, I remember very well of being suspended during the Cardinal Series in St. Louis, right in the middle of the summer. And I flew back here to New York, and uh, Mr. Ricky took me up the river here about 115 miles to the Boy Scout camp. And I spent four days up there, and I never enjoyed anything as much in my life. They put shows on, and, and the Eagle Scouts uh, put shows on. <clears throat> and I spent four of the most wonderful days. And it was right in the heat of the summer, and these kids were just terrific. We were sleeping outdoors. Outdoors in the tent, and we played ball, and the kids were great. I never enjoyed anything so much in my life. Well, Lorraine. Uh, you say that you now can identify most of the players and you know the bat boy because he hasn't any number. How are you coming on the subtle points of the game? Could you define a, uh, oh, a double play for me? Yes, I can tell you about a double play. Good. I and, couldn't. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to tell that. you, Dick, if I'm there to nudge you and tell her how it goes. <laughs> well, as long as you're there to nudge me. <laughs> and uh, I'm learning the difference between a curveball and a fastball. And, uh, say... Let's you see, can, what else do you can I tell do? a curve from a fast ball, a straight ball? Well, when I hear some argument about it, and I, I always didn't know agree that. with him. <laughs> Lorraine, uh, were you interested in baseball at all when you were out there in Utah, when you were a no, little girl? No, I didn't know that such a game existed when I was in Utah. I guess it isn't a very big sport out there, is it? <laughs> oh, yes, but uh, I just had my mind on other things. And just a minute, Dick, I can answer a better one than that. What's that? Even after we, uh, before we were married, she, uh, she came, uh, she came east or something, and somebody asked her uh, about Mr. DeRocher, and she said, who is he? No, I said, <laughs> <didn't. laughs> well, what does he do? That was it. What does he do? No, I mean, that's, she found that's out. answer I found enough out. right there. What does he do? Well, now, for instance, what did Mr. DeRocher play when he was in the game? He was a shortstop. Uh -huh. Well, good. At one time, he, he played right second base. Nose. You can see, you see, Dick, I prompted her. I, I told her all about myself. <laughs> Have you been reading up on the uh, life and times of Leo DeRocher, or has he been telling you? He's been telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Those long evenings by the fire? Oh, well, he has to split them. I have to tell him about me, too. <laughs> Darling, do you think you should tell the time? All right, 24 minutes past 8. Say, honey, uh, when are we going to have some of that swell royal pudding again? Well, as a matter of fact, I wish we could have it for breakfast, but I thought that would be a little too rich. We're going to have it tomorrow at lunch. Mary is making a chocolate pie out of royal chocolate pudding. Oh, that's a great idea. Whipped cream on top? Yes, if you'd like it, although royal chocolate pudding is so rich and delicious alone, it really doesn't need whipped cream. I know, but I'm one for gilding the lily. And by the way, I'm keeping our royal dessert a secret from Dickie and Jill until after they've eaten lunch. If they knew they were going to have royal chocolate pudding in any form, they'd just tear through their lunch. Well, this family isn't the only one that goes for royal puddings in a big way as proved when 1,052 Royal users were asked why they switched to Royal from other brands. Yes, 8 out of 10 said Royal puddings taste more delicious. And they do, to make it 1,053. And I have a puzzle for you this morning. You have? Mm-hmm. Well, what two words both begin with the letter C and mean the same thing? Hmm, well, let's see. Uh, I'm afraid you've got me. Why, comfortable and conformal. Very, very good. And so early in the morning, too. Because as far as I'm concerned, conformal shoes are the most comfortable shoes on any active feet. They are that. After all, with that unique plastic inner sole, they couldn't possibly be anything but comfortable. Yes, after conformal shoes are fitted for size, that plastic inner sole is warmed and softened. Then it's put back on the foot, and right away you can just 
feel your weight pushing that plastic around till it molds right to the foot. Oh, it's the most fascinating process, Lorraine. Well, no plastic wonder... oozing around. <laughs> <laughs> it's really no wonder conformal shoes are known as action shoes. And conformal shoes are good-looking, too. They're lightweight and tailored. Uh, here are just a few of the conformal stores here in Manhattan, 25 West 35th Street, and in Jamaica, 89-71, 164th Street, Union City, it's uh, 4019 Bergen Line Avenue, and in Bridgeport, Connecticut, 76 Cannon Street. You know, there's one question I'd like to, to ask, Lorraine. Uh, just uh, tell me if this is too personal or too sentimental in your memory book, but I'd like to know, knowing Leo, I guess I've known him longer than you have, I'd like to know if he got down on one knee when he proposed. <laughs> what did he no. slip? <laughs> uh, <laughs> might have been his elbow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, he didn't. I'd, I'd like to know if it was a short proposal or a long-winded one. Well, I don't know whether he even asked me or not. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> he just sort of gravitated. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, Lorraine, I understand that Leo almost became a Harvard man recently. Oh, yes, I want to know about that, too. I... That fascinates me. Well, he almost did. <laughs> he was offered a, a job at Harvard when he was suspended this year. And uh, I don't know. Gee, would have been wonderful, wouldn't it? I know a Harvard man. Yes. <laughs> uh, would you uh, explain to me what you were supposed to do and why you didn't do it, Leo? Well, I, <clears throat> when I was suspended, Dorothy, I uh, received this offer to uh, assist the... Uh, the coach at Harvard with the baseball team and with the uh, athletics in general, I believe. That's what the job would have consisted of. But uh, I, I was pretty upset at the time, and I, I, I just didn't uh, take stock in anything at that particular time, sure. although it, it really would have been wonderful. It was a grand offer. How is the Harvard baseball team? Well, they're all right. They're all right. They have a pretty good club up there, and, and uh, I come from close by. You know, Springfield, Mass is my home, mm -hmm. and I, I would have enjoyed it very much. Uh, what would have happened to some of those college umpires if you let them have it, Leo? Oh, I couldn't do that, Dick. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to be very careful. You would there. have uh, you would have had to do it in very elegant yeah. language, I imagine, oh, at Harvard. Yes, polysyllabic words. Oh, yes. sure. I'd have walked out and doffed my cap and told the umpire I thought he was in error. <laughs> then gently to... brushed off, as they say. I wish to take issue with you. Oh, yes. And he'd have taken issue with me, probably. Only the, the good thing about that, they couldn't suspend me for <laughs> three days or find me any uh, goodly sum of money. They might have just told me to leave the field, quietly. Yes, you know, Leo, in your career, you've been suspended from uh, your teams. You get suspended from your team or from the league. What is the uh, Well, it's the, uh, the game. You mean when you get put out the game, Dorothy? Yes, or oh, I, say, I was out. suspended after such and such a game. Well, uh, you get, uh, uh, I, uh, I think my record shows about eight times a year, on an average of eight times a year, it's that I get put out of the ballpark. You've been suspended as many times as Ann Sheridan has been from Warner Brothers. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> you really but ought I, to get together and compare. I've only been suspended uh, oh, for days, what I mean by three or five days. That's only happened to me a few times in baseball. But I have been put out of the game quite a number of times. In Cuba, he was put out at the points of bayonet. That's what? right. That's right. <laughs> really? Quite a Around few years by ago. Gendarme. Quite a few years ago. The constabulary <laughs> walked in? What? This was, was in 19, uh, 1940. 1940, I uh, kicked on a decision with a Cuban umpire who couldn't speak English. And <laughs> I had a little boy named Munchy Diarcos on the bench who was my interpreter. And uh, this uh, Wyatt was pitching this day, and we were playing the Cubans, and they had beaten us pretty badly. And I was upset about it because I had a real good ball club. And a fellow tried to push a ball down the first base, and Wyatt ran over to pick it up, and the runner fellow that bunted the ball liked to step on. Well, he almost stepped right on his hand as he picked the ball up. He was way out of line and automatically should have been called out. And the umpire did not call him out. And I run out and argued with him. And <laughs> he was giving it to me in Spanish. And I was talking in English to him just as fast as he was in Spanish. And he eventually threw me out of the park. And we started to shove one another around. And the next thing I knew, I looked up and I was surrounded by gendarmes. And by the point of bayonets, they ushered me right out of the ballpark. 600 feet down the left field foul line. You mean this translator did no good at all? It did, and at that time, uh, the president of uh, Cuba was Batista, 
And he sent word down the following day, uh, do that again. He liked that. He enjoyed that. He <laughs> it was a great fun. It was a great sport. But they ushered me right out. It was 600 long feet down to that left field foul line, and they just kept pointing bayonets at me all the way down. Blow, what blow, was blow. the crowd doing when oh, this was happening? Oh, there was, was about 30,000 there, and they were just a whistling. They were having a great time. They thought that was the first time they'd seen that. That was wonderful. They enjoyed that. Oh, I think I'd sort of enjoy it myself, but I'd wonder a little I bit about what was going to I got a little scared, Georgie. I didn't like all these young arms around me with these bayonets pointing at me. And just when I'd stop and turn around and some more, they'd give me a little shove with that bayonet. And I didn't yeah, go over that too well. That's the first time that ever happened. Did you ever see such musical comedy cops in your life as they have in Cuba? They have, oh, they're, they're they have something. visors on their caps about two That's feet right. long. And they're on every street corner. Every other. Oh, of course, thousands. Leo is the only man I know who would argue with the point of a bayonet. He'd turn around to argue. Well, I still turn back, Dorothy. I wanted to get in on the last word, but I couldn't do it. It's 31 minutes past eight. Say, sweetie, I have a new adage to pass along. Well, let's eh? hear it. Never say die. That's not exactly new, I'm afraid. Well, let me finish. Never say die, say Tintex. Oh, I get you. Tintex is the magic word to completely transform old fabrics into bright, new-looking things. Because all fabric Tintex is the one dye that dyes everything and beautifully. Right, and Tintex comes in over 50 attractive, and I might even say glamorous shades. Mm -hmm. Yet Tintex is still only 10 and 15 cents, or 25 cents, for the giant size. Just think, honey. For only a few cents, dresses or curtains, to name only a couple of things, can be dyed to look just like new again with Tintex. Yes, and all fabric Tintex is guaranteed by Park and Tilford to dye any fabric, natural or synthetic. It's 32 minutes past eight. Do you remember that game that we used to play called I Went on a Trip and Took Such and Such? Oh, sure. It goes uh, around the room with everyone adding something to it, something they'd take on a trip, and you have to remember everything that's preceded you? Is that the one? Yes, and I've just thought of an item that should always be used in that game. National City Bank Traveler's Check. What better thing is there to take on a trip? Nothing. Outside of a toothbrush, I guess. But those National City Bank Traveler's Checks should always be taken on real trips, not games, honey. Because losing all your money when you're traveling is no fun. It certainly isn't. And if all your money is lost or stolen or even destroyed by fire, if it's in National City Bank Traveler's Check, it will all be refunded. Yep, every red cent. And National City Bank is America's largest worldwide bank. You bet. That's why National City Bank Traveler's Checks are good as gold and twice as safe. You know, I noticed uh, just before we went on the air that uh, Leo was carrying uh, a little gold locket with four pictures in it. One of the pictures is Lorraine, the first one. And then there's a little girl, and then there's a little boy, just a little baby boy, and then there's another little girl. And uh, I would like to know their names and ages. Well, how about letting Lorraine answer that for you, Dorothy? She can, she'll do a much better job than I will. All right. How about I'd it? Like and you answer it. Well, uh, Angela is five, Michelle is three, and Christopher is a year and a half. I love Christopher. They're Christopher. wonderful. That certainly is. And they're out in California now? Yes, they're out in California, but they aren't listening to the radio. <laughs> no. <laughs> a little early. <laughs> well, they couldn't hear this program, I'm afraid, anyway. But, um... The little I'm ones up and down the eastern seaboard. They, they get a wonderful kick out of, of listening to the radio. <coughs> Leo had a sports show there last summer. Or last last winter, fall. Last, last fall. fall. And they would recognize him every time. Really? Us. And they recognize these pictures on magazines or in the paper. I know. At one time, they had taken a candid picture. It was a dreadful picture of Leo and me boarding a plane. And it was in the paper the next morning, and my little three-year-old girl thought, she says, ooh, look, Mommy's mad. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, Leo is a great piggyback artist and uh, very good at uh, well, no, the children's so hour. Well, not so much at piggyback. He fights with them. He tosses them around. Oh, they, boxes. They rest. Mm -hmm. I have and a wonderful have time with them. Wonderful, Dorothy. They're just wonderful. Uh, they follow me all around. Do they like uh, baseball, Leo? Oh, yeah. I get in the, uh, if I get in the car, they want to go with me, and they, they want to play catch with me in the living room. They throw the ball around. They have a tennis ball in there, and the kids just toss it. And they, wherever I go, they, they want to go, too. If I'll go out in the yard or, and start around the property, they'll want to go with me. They want to get a hold of me and follow me around. Well, if you two will just give this a little more thought, you may wind up with a softball team. <laughs> well, uh, we will, but we'll have to give it a lot of more thought, though, Dick. That, uh, that <laughs> takes a lot, a lot of thought. <laughs> a lot of thinking. <laughs> many, many, many thoughts. 
Oh. I am sure that uh, Mrs. DeRocher is very pleased. Uh, you notice that little phrase of Leo's, we uh, toss them all back and forth in the living room. I'm sure Mama is delighted with that. I know how I feel when uh, you and Dickie or Pop and Dickie start tossing a ball around the nursery and knocking things off shelves. I certainly wouldn't want it to happen in the living room. You better start hiding the Delft plates. Well, it's there isn't on the wall. so much balls as it's oranges. We've got oranges all along the beams that we can't get down. <laughs> and it isn't so much oranges as it's the baby. They toss the baby. That's what makes me sick. Oh, I'll make <laughs> tomboys out of the frightened. girls. I'll make tomboys out of the girls, and the boy will be... Well, I'll make him a shortstop. Well, and you... Of course, his mother's objecting to that specifically right now. <laughs> I'll make him a ball player. You don't want. Well, you can always retaliate in kind. Say, you know, I don't. I want no actors in my. <laughs> <family>. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> uh, what, what was your last picture, Typhoon? No, Tycoon. Oh. Right. <laughs> it's uh, Dorothy Lamour here is Typhoon. Oh, yes, the well, that's, that's one girl. Looked very nice in the sarong. Well, thank, thank you. you. One girl asked me what the name of my last picture was, and I said Tycoon. She said, Oh, is it about an island? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, uh, what is it about? You obviously are not the tycoon in it. Uh, I'm the tycoon's duck, oh. and I wear a beautiful black wig and look very South American. Oh, a black wig? Yes. Yeah. Oh, this I is a it. South American industrialist? Yes. My father's an American. My mother is South American. Oh, oh. And I just look tremendously rich, and I wear the most beautiful clothes. Well, what's the next picture on your schedule? I haven't got one on my schedule right at the moment. I see. Yes, it is, uh, here on a little vacation, too. A long vacation. This well, is going to be the longest honeymoon on record. These people uh, just have no intention to work. I know, <laughs> if I know. If I know my Leo over here, he's not going to be able to remain idle very long. What are some of your plans? I heard a rumor that you were offered a job uh, refereeing wrestling matches, Leo. Uh, I certainly was, Dick, but now can't you just picture that? Just visualize me walking into a ring. Uh, a mere 185 pounds, and walk into a ring, and there's two big team men, about 250. A couple of gorillas. And I am now reversing my procedure. Instead of uh, going after the umpires and referees, I am now the referee. <laughs> Can you visualize what will happen to me? They will toss each other around, and I will try to separate them, and the first thing you know, I am belted, and I am on that mat. And as I told Lorraine, I wouldn't be home for three days, the first <laughs> match I referee. No, yeah. I, I've been offered that, Dick, but I, I'm going to have to turn that down. I, I know you're a very capable an actor, Leo. I, I've seen your uh, thespian work at times. But, You've uh, heard him in Pinafore. Yeah, of course, oh. yes. I heard, oh, his histrionics were without fear. <laughs> but uh, I can't quite imagine Leo standing there and taking it. You know, if the, if the, the staged argument with the wrestlers got a little bit heated, Leo might just forget himself. Yes, forget that it was all fun. And then the, uh, one of the wrestlers might forget himself. I say one of the wrestlers. <laughs> and then I'm you could all forget me because I'm <laughs> gone. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm not going to be idle, I'll tell you that. I'm going to do something and do it real quick. I've been idle long enough. I'm getting to get it. Well, I'll tell you a thought that I had, uh, not since your vacation started, but uh, several years ago, I was doing a show, and uh, I could have put... There was, there was a part that could have been converted into a baseball player or a baseball manager. And I thought, oh, my golly, if I could get uh, Leo DeRocher to play this. And I, I, honestly, uh, I wish to goodness I had a show that you could go into. So do I right now, dear. <laughs> because I think you'd be swell on Broadway. Oh, I think you'd be wonderful on the stage. It's 39 minutes past 8. Well, honey, our young son has a use all of his own for Lydia Gray tissue. What's that, carrying them to school for a teacher instead of an apple? No, but that's not such a bad idea. No, as a matter of fact, the last time it rained, I saw him with a mitt full of Lydia Gray tissues wiping off his bicycle very carefully. Said he didn't want it to rust. Well, chalk up another use for those versatile Lydia Grays. It's a long list, honey. Lydia Gray doe skin tissues are so strong and so soft and so absorbent, they're perfect for so many things. How well I know that. This household would probably fall to pieces with a horrible crash if we didn't have Lydia Gray's around. And Lydia Gray dose skin tissues are so economical, too. You can use them 25 hours a day and still be way ahead. Yes, Lydia Gray tissues are my ideal of an ideal tissue. Uh, any weather this morning? Oh, isn't that awful? Weather. I didn't get the weather report, but I know what it is. 
It's going to be partly cloudy and very crispy cold today and even colder tonight. You know, there's snow all over the place except here in New York. There's some snow up in Syracuse. Leo was telling me about a ball game that was played in the snow yesterday. Where Where was that? No, it was was, uh, snowed out, I think, in Cleveland. I think they uh, they snowed there and they had to call the game. Uh, On account of that. And uh, last night. Last night. Were you at the game last night? Yes, I was. Dick, in August. Terribly cold. But they had, uh, I noticed uh, in the paper, they had uh, close to 33,000 people there. But it was awfully cold, much too cold to play. But they did, and the people Uh, sat through it. Does that affect the game, the quality of the Yeah, it really does. Your hands get cold, Dick, and they're numb, and you don't feel like grabbing that bat and going up there and hit it. It stings. And uh, you just, it's hard to be a good pitcher on a a cold night. But this fellow, Burkeen, didn't affect him much last night. He picked a great game. He's a great pitcher. Oh, he does. Oh, right. he's a great pitcher. Great. And that ball club now is starting to come into their own, the Cardinals. They're not that bad the way they've started. And they're starting to come around now. Oh, yes. I heard a, I heard a sports commentator just uh, oh, <coughs> giving it to the Cardinals and said that they were the, they were the champions or something. And yeah, they're the champions they? of the world, though, I think. And then to play so badly, I mean, they were, they're now <coughs> they're now 5 and 12. That's 7 below 500. It they're, is? Not, they're not that bad at all. <laughs> they're not that bad at all. They're a good ball club. Excuse me. Uh, may I interrupt you, Leo? No, would you explain that to me? That. I really don't know what that means, Lorraine. Five and twelve and five with seven hundred. Well, they see, they've only won five and they've lost twelve. And uh, there are seven games below the five hundred mark. And that's pretty hard. That, uh, that means that uh, they've got to win seven before they lose anymore to get back even with five hundred again, to win as many as, as they lost. And... And uh, if they don't do that pretty soon, it's going to be past midseason here pretty soon, and, and they'll still be down. And it'll be and too late. It'll be, uh, it, it's awful hard to catch up. There are now, there's six games out of first place now. And that's, uh, they're generally that way. The Cardinals have been for years. They generally come up around the 1st of July. They're always four, five, six games out of first place. And then they go from there. But to be that far now, and then if they don't step on the gas now and come out of it, why, they can be down pretty bad by the halfway mark. Uh, what is the Dodger record at the moment? How are they Dodgers are, uh, are now, uh, they're 10 and 5. They're 5 above the 500 mark, but they're tied with Chicago and Boston for first place. Uh, the Dodgers have a, a good ball club, Dick, and they've got a real chance to win this time. They really have. they got I a suppose good ball club. It's Dis- too early in the season to tell just how Jackie Robinson is, yes, is going to uh, turn out as a ball player. I've only seen him play the, the two ball games, Dick, but he, uh, to me, he, he doesn't look like the same kid that I'd seen play before. Uh, he isn't hitting the ball and taking that good cut at it like he used to. And I don't think he's quite set here, sure of himself, around first base. It's new to him, and I don't think he's uh, set there. But he is a good ball player and a fine gentleman. He really is. He's yes, well, I suppose boy. lots of boys, when they make that jump from the minors to the major leagues, was he, who was he with before he came He to was with Montreal. He come right out of California and went right into AAA and led the league in hitting. He had a very fine year there. And, uh, and he's a very high-class gentleman, Dick. And, and, uh, and uh, I think that uh, if given a chance that the boy is really going to make it. And, of course, the new manager they have over there now, Bert Schotten, uh, doesn't know these players too well. I mean, he's just new there. And he, ha- he didn't have the chance uh, to be with them at spring training. He just took the club over when I was suspended at, at the uh, beginning of the season. But uh, I know that once Bert gets acclimated and knows what he has in these players, that uh, he'll give a good account of himself. He's, he's quite a fella. And he knows baseball frontwards and backwards. He'll, he'll do a good job as a manager. I'm sure he will. He'll try very hard, but uh, in the hearts of those Dodger fans, Leo, I know from what I've seen around that you are missed very, very badly. I miss them too, Dick, very much. Don't you get excited? Not only the Dodger fans. I've seen evidences all over New York City that that exists. Yes, I think Leo probably never uh, would have known how many friends and loyal supporters he had if this hadn't come up, because I've heard more people saying that Leo, wish we had him back, you know, defending him, getting very excited. And, and uh, he used to be uh, more argued about, <laughs> you know, uh, in the days when he was uh, scolding the umpires. It's 45 minutes past 8. 
Say, honey, can you imagine anything 120 years old being ultra-modern? Well, the only thing I can think of is Butoni, because Butoni has been making macaroni products for 120 years, and yet they're ultra-modern <laughs> foods according to good nutrition. Sure thing. And according to taste, too. Mm, what could be more appetizing than a great big plate heaped up with piping hot fragrant Butoni spaghettini? You're very, very descriptive this morning. That was a perfect description of Butoni spaghettini. Add some zestful, spicy Butoni spaghetti sauce, and you've got it. Butoni spaghettini is thinner spaghetti, and every bite is full of goodness, as well as proteins, vitamins, and other health-giving minerals. Yes, Butoni spaghettini is a fine meal for the whole family. And I might add, a favorite of this family. That's Butoni, spelled B-U-I-T-O-N-I, Butoni spaghettini. And speaking of uh, Butoni, I saw a woman walking along the street yesterday carrying a shopping bag, and I could tell without speaking one word to her that she was a very smart housekeeper. Uh -huh. A little feminine telepathy at work? No, I cheated. I saw a bottle of Larvex sticking out of her shopping bag. Well, that is enough to know she's up on her housekeeping. Larvex is one swell <laughs> more trooper. It certainly is. Larvex penetrates every single tiny woolen fiber so effectively that moths would rather starve to death than nibble anything sprayed with it. Yes, and Larvex is completely odorless. So after whooshing woolens with Larvex, you can hang them right back in their regular places. Larvex is used by large woolen mills everywhere, not only because it's odorless, but also because once spraying with Larvex moth-proofs woolens for a whole year. Say... Say, uh, what was this? Oh, uh, I love the name of that shop. I have to get this in. It is relative of, uh, related to nothing. The uh, place where you got that sweater? Tweeds and Weeds. Tweeds and Weeds. Isn't yes, I love that, too. I think that's, that's just wonderful. The Weeds. I get the Tweeds, but the Weeds has me baffled. <laughs> well, they had to have something to rhyme with, with Tweeds. So they got weeds. And of course, there is such a thing as widow's weeds, but I would hardly think that it would snap up a sports shop to <laughs> advertise <laughs> that, <laughs> would you think? Do you wear many sweaters, uh, Lorraine? Are you a lot of a sweater, sweater? I'm sweater not a type. sweater girl. Not a sweater uh, girl, but a sweater type. Yes. <laughs> uh, Leo, you said something uh, a little while ago about the Brooklyns having a good chance to win the pennant. Uh, and this surprised me because I, when I read the paper and heard about all the the boys that they traded, particularly Kirby Higby, who has such a wonderful name. It seems to me that that name would be enough to win a series. I was very puzzled. Well, they, uh... uh Dorothy, they have uh, a limit in baseball and in teams that you can only carry so many men. And the Dodgers have uh, accumulated over uh, the past few years a number of very fine young prospects. And they have those prospects in the catching, pitching, infield, and outfield. Uh, they just can't carry all the men that they have. And when they ask waivers on, on them in the National League, these other clubs know that they're good players, and they'd be glad to pay $10,000 for some of these kids. So. They, uh, they ask waivers, and Pittsburgh, Boston, or St. Louis, or some club will claim them. So the Brooklyn Club has to withdraw. Now, the only way that they can get down to the player limit is to trade uh, or sell some of their players. And uh, in order to make the deal with the Pittsburgh ball club, uh, I wasn't here, but I can just see it, that uh, Pittsburgh demanded uh, a name uh, in the deal, a name pitcher. They wanted a fellow like Higby or Greg or Lombardi or Hatton. Or Franca, they wanted one of the top flight pitchers that the Brooklyn Club had. And in order to make that deal, they had to put Higby in the deal. And uh, I don't know how much money they got, but uh, I know that they, as we say in baseball, they lopped off five names and only added one. So they gained four. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they got rid of four men off of their list. And I still think they have to get rid of some more and before they can get down. And that has to be done very shortly. They have to get down to 30 by May 15th. Oh, have you any idea how many they have now? I think there are uh, three or four over the, uh, over the number right now. I think they're about 34 or 5 right now, and they've got to get down. And uh, what kind of characters are likely to go? Pitchers? Well, yeah, most, shortstop? most anyone. I think they are overstocked, as they say, uh, uh, with infielders right now. I think they have more infielders than they really need. But there's some, uh, there's some clubs that don't have infielders, and they haven't got the ones they have are not as good as these boys. And uh, there's no chance to send these kids out. 
on waivers because these other clubs will claim them. Well, now, Leo, what is in a baseball player's heart after he gets traded and he's with a new team? Oh, they uh, they hate to leave the club they've been with. I know Kirby Higby. Uh, I talked to him on the telephone an hour after he, he was traded. I heard it out on the coast, and I called him and talked to him. And uh, he was terribly downhearted and disappointed, and so was his wife. But uh, that happens all the time, Dorothy. And uh, uh, once you get with your new club and you're with them maybe a week or ten days, you get acclimated with the players and talk to them and visit with them, well, it, uh, it just gets to be the same old thing over again. You get a new school spirit. That's right. You I know Hank new. Greenberg seems to have gotten suddenly enthusiastic about well, Pittsburgh. Now, now you're talking to one of the greats. He's one of the great players and one of the great fellows that we've ever had in this game. He's a great fellow. Yes, I think so, too, and so attractive, as I always say. Wonderful. It's wonderful. Shoulders, yes. Honey, what does spring make you think of? Oh, birds, flowers, uh, Going to uh, baseball games? I don't know. Why? Well, I can see that you don't have a woman's practical slant on spring. Most of us think almost first of all about spring cleaning. Oh, honey, isn't that kind of unromantic? Well, it doesn't have to be, because right along with cleaning, I think of giving terrace or porch furniture a shiny new coat of sapolin or even the kitchen, and there's nothing unromantic about the bright, lovely spring colors that sapolin speed enamel comes in. Well, I can see myself now romantically painting away. But seriously, honey... I do get a kick out of painting the saplin. The stuff's so easy to apply, and when you're through, you really accomplish something. And saplin speed enamel comes in scads of beautiful colors and shades. We'll have to look over the saplin color chart and start making up our minds what we want to paint and what colors we want to paint it. Well, no matter what colors we pick, it'll be a professional-looking job, thanks to saplin. And speaking of decor, Lorraine, I would like your candid opinion of something. What do you think of baseball uniforms? Well... I think they should be improved. <laughs> That's exactly the way I feel about them. Don't you think if they even gave them a turn-back collar, you know, like on pajamas instead of that round neck, it always looks like old-fashioned... Lord, old going out to pitch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we will stop the game in the third inning, girls, and serve tea. Honey, I like this. Well, no, really, Leo. Now, women are very important, aren't they? They have Ladies' Day. Don't you want to get us into the stadium? I should say we do, Dorothy. The women make the game. They screech and they holler at the least provocation. Somebody hits a high fly and they think it's a home run. It's wonderful. And <laughs> That's me. That's oh, me. Oh, it's wonderful. Right? <laughs> it's wonderful. I like the high flies best of all, I must say. That's my <laughs> favorite play in the entire game. I get so excited. I haven't learned yet, you know, not to get excited because it looks so pretty. What? But I do the high fly when it, you know, goes sailing up in the air and you think, oh, maybe he's not going to catch it. And someday he won't, Leo, and you'll be terribly embarrassed. But didn't you know that the Brooklyn Club had inaugurated satin uniforms, Dorothy? We, uh, they wear them at night baseball. We did last year, uh, although last night uh, I had noticed that they didn't have them on. Maybe that's because it was too cold. But we do have white satin uniforms. You should have little beaver jackets for them when it gets too cold. I had collars last night. No, but I do. I see no reason for a round neckline on a baseball uniform. It's so unbecoming to any what man. What would you suggest, Dorothy? What should a, they wear? A turn, a turn back, just like you have on a sport, like a on a sports shirt. How do you like that? Somebody oh, no. slide in the second base and come up with one lapel. Somebody <laughs> have a hole in the other. <laughs> Well, then you get him a new one. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand why it has to be the only sport where men look so silly, and they don't do any work. They just run around. Uh, well, excuse me. No, that's all right, dear. Well, we're, we're, we are almost off the air, you know. Before we leave, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. and Mrs. DeRocha, thank Lorraine Day and Leo for coming over here, and it certainly is nice to see how every day is beautiful with Leo now. Yes, I'm indeed. so happy. Well, you're so right, Dick, and it's been a pleasure being here. It's time to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.